What's up, YouTube? My name is Campbell, and this is episode four of Simple Drums Done Well. Today, we're going to be talking about a really short phrase from Mike Clark, who is the drummer that is most known for playing with Herbie Hancock on the record Thrust. He's famous for his groove on Actual Proof. <laughs> Be talking about some variations that he did talking about that actual groove it's a lot of talking I know from a video he did with drumchannel.com and we're gonna really try and keep it concise because I keep saying I'm gonna keep it more concise I'm gonna be kinder to myself in the editing room. I'm gonna be kinder to myself in the editing room. Oh my. And I keep just going way beyond what I intend to do in terms of scope. Today, I swear, we're gonna keep it simple. Simple drums done well. We're gonna keep it simple and we're gonna just knock this thing out. Before we do, a little bit of history. So after 1974's Thrust with Herbie Hancock, Mike went on to record a few more records with Herbie, uh, including Manchild, Thrust, and Death Wish in the next year or two. He later on joined the Headhunters, which had Herbie for some time, but then had a whole host of other jazz musicians. So throughout Mike's career, other than being a funk legend, he has been a jazz drummer and been swinging his butakas off the whole time. He's played with a who's who of jazz musicians, including Christian McBride, Randy Brecker, longtime collaborator Michael Wolf, Chris Potter, Felix Pistorius, and many, many more. I got to see Mike do a clinic at the Collective School of Music while I was studying there in 2013, and he was such a cool dude, uh, just not only playing his butt off, but his whole demeanor just had this really old school uh, jazz and funk attitude, but very nice as well. And. Mike just seems like the man, I have to say. Mike is the man. I might seem very complimentary all the time, and I am, but Mike is the man. What we're gonna talk about is this phrase that Mike plays at the end after he kind of describes how to play the actual proof groove. And what the phrase is, is according to Mike, something that is him talking. So I start to talk a little bit. So rather than just sticking to, as he first describes, this kind of funky drummer beat that inspired him from Clyde Stubblefield. He starts to talk a little bit and mix up his pattern and add some flair in there, add some spice in there. And the other thing within this that we're going to examine and why it sounds so good, I think, is the dynamics within Mike's playing. So both with his hi-hat, uh, accents versus non-accents, and everything in between, there's a whole range of dynamic there. With the snare drum, certain ghost notes are really soft, other ghost notes are a little softer, and then there, of course, are rim shots. We're going to not try and go too deep into that and think more in a David Garibaldi approach of two dynamic levels ghost notes and accents, even though we will be keeping in mind that it is a little bit more on a spectrum dynamically. It's all on a spectrum, man. Um, David Garibaldi, definitely an influence of Mike Clark's as well, which is crazy because maybe it went the other way. I'm not sure. They're both funk OGs for sure. Uh, but here we go. Here's the phrase from Mike Clark. Sounds like this. All right, so let's jump onto the kit. Let's check out some dynamics. Let's check out the phrase and let's get out of here. So I'd start to talk a little bit.
why I'd start to talk a little bit. If you want to get at the dynamics that Mike is just killing in this video, there's some really subtle hi-hat and snare drum dynamics happening. And again, I think maybe approaching it with the two dynamic Garibaldi concept is gonna be the easiest way to describe it. Now, one of the go-tos is a non-accented hi-hat followed by an accented hi-hat, right? So, non-accent, accent. Okay, and he uses this within the groove a lot, especially for something like Like in the first bar, he does that a couple times where it's really subtle, but he's playing a non accident note followed by an accident note, and it really changes the vibe of the groove and the feel of the groove. And then in the last little section of the phrase as well, when he does this, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of that same softer to louder hi-hat in this part. Then, especially that last hi-hat note in that bar, he gives so much accent to, and it just gives it all of the sauce, right? That one compared to the other non-accented hi-hat notes in that bar just has so much contrast, and it's super hip as a result. Alright, so thank you for checking out episode 4. If you enjoyed the content, I don't want to plug, but you know what? It really helps if you subscribe, if you like the video, and even hit the notification bell for new videos, which are coming out every week. And check back next week for episode 5. Thank you, thank you. I'll see you all on the flip. Check, 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 checking the microphone. It's the background now. We're checking the microphone. I guess we should do like a outro here too. Ah. From Clyde, Stub Clyde Stubblefield. Weirdo. 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 Don't say that, dude. Don't say that. Plug that shit in. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. I got to see on the flip. I'll see you all on the flip. Am I missing something? I feel like there's gotta be some more shit that I haven't said yet, right? I don't know, I tend to talk too much. And I'll see you all next time. <laughs>